Greetings and welcome back to this MOOC, Introduction to Virus Management. In the second lecture of this series, I will introduce you to the Laboratory Biorisk Management System. As a Biorisk Manager, your role and responsibility within this Laboratory Biorisk Management System is to ensure effectiveness and efficiency of the system itself. In order to do this, you need to identify, understand, and manage the system in terms of interrelated processes. This may involve administrative aspects, the laboratory aspects, as well as the facility aspects. We will delve into this as we go through this lecture. So management effectively involves defining, structuring, and understanding the system, as well as continually improving the system through management and the process of review. You also must establish what are known as resource constraints prior to action. Now, as a biorisk manager, you must develop expertise in multiple areas. And this is not something that you can do in an instant. It is something that you develop over a period of time through experience and reading and interaction with the system itself. Now, if you are beginning your career as a biorisk manager, you need to develop a basic knowledge of life sciences. This involves a knowledge of pathogens and biological agents. Then the next one is standards. Standards are the guidelines and, for example, the World Health Organization, Laboratory Biosafety Manual, the CWA 15793 and other guidelines. You must be aware of these standards. And you may have to have uh, some knowledge of engineering and design as you will be working in a facility which is an engineering facility. A uh, biorisk management system may require the construction and development of a biosafety level 3 or biosafety level 2 laboratory. And as a biorisk manager, you must be aware of the systems and how they operate, how the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and directional airflows are basically configured. So in this module, we have five basic objectives. And the first one is the biorisk management system itself. The second one is the biorisk policy, planning, implementation, and review. This is what I will delve into in this particular module. Okay, these are your learning outcomes for this particular module. Now, I want you to take up this challenge in your own respective institutions. I want you to develop a policy and a laboratory management system based on your particular organizational requirements. Okay, so if you don't have a management system in your respective laboratory, try and do this. De describe the biorisk management system, develop a policy statement, develop a plan, develop a strategy to implement your management system, and develop, describe the process of review and corrective action. Now, if you need additional expertise or information on this particular aspect of management, please post your queries in the forums. I will set up a forum and I can develop additional lectures to address your specific needs during the course of this MOOC. But at the end of this MOOC, this is what you are expected to develop as a value added resource for your respective organizations as well as for yourself. Okay, now this is what we face in a scenario. Now, for instance, I am a biosafety officer or a biorisk manager located here. So what I need is more authority to control the research. However, I also need resources from the management in terms of financial resources. So as a biorisk manager, you and me, we serve as the bridge between management and research. So management will always say, implement biorisk management, but the budget is limited. Researchers will always say, please don't hinder my research by creating too many rules. So as a biorisk manager, you have to strive to strike the balance between management and the researcher. And this is the challenge in biorisk management. This challenge may be seen 
as a uh, greater challenge than the virus uh, management strategy itself in terms of the pathogen and the laboratory processes. So this is your role as a bio-risk manager. Let us now delve into the management systems approach in laboratory bio-risk management. The management system approach is based on first defining the system. When we define the system, we essentially delve into the structure of the system itself. This means that everyone's roles and responsibilities in the system are very clearly defined and this ensures traceability. The next aspect involves understanding the system. As a bio-risk manager, you will have to operate in a system which involves multiple systems. This system may comprise the laboratory procedures themselves, the engineering aspects of the facility, as well as certain administrative aspects and legal aspects. So as a bio-risk manager, you must understand the system in its entirety. The next aspect is on continuous quality improvement, which is the reduction in the risk by continually improving the system. And continual improvement also keeps everyone alert and on their toes in terms of the awareness of the situations around them in the workspace. And finally, we need to establish resource constraints. For instance, if you are working in a facility which does not have sufficient budget to carry out specific procedures related to biological agents, please inform the top management and document this. Do not carry out procedures which are beyond the envelope of your safety. Now this is something which I want you to undertake as a challenge. Your organization probably has a bio-risk management policy or in case you do not have a bio-risk management policy, please try and restructure this as an example and convey it to your top management. For instance, I have given you a generic example of a bio-risk management policy which is as follows. So this organization is your organization is committed to, this is the word commitment. The core business relates to the specific business of your organization which may be for instance a diagnostic lab, research lab or pharmaceutical lab and this is another word keyword which is continuous improvement of the bio-risk management system in compliance with these are some of the elements which go into the bio-risk management policy as a general principle the policy should be specific measurable achievable realistic and time based these are some of the general guiding principles when you design and develop policies for biosafety and biosecurity at your respective organization. This is the principle of continuous quality improvement which forms the basis of all management systems and you basically begin with your planning and you commence to doing or implementing. You move on to checking and finally you act, you act upon any kind of inconsistencies or limitations in this entire system. So this completes the cycle of continuous quality improvement. Let us look at a realistic example for the purpose of this lecture. For instance, we all got together and decided to set up a diagnostic laboratory for the detection of viruses. So what are the first questions which we need to address as bio-risk managers or biosafety officers. The first one is the procedure itself. What is the procedure? Does it involve PCR, ELISA? Does it involve microscopy? That's the procedure. Then we move on to the organization of the procedures, the workflow in the organization. How will the sample be received? How will it be processed? And how will the data be recorded? These are the organizational aspects. Then there is the waste management aspect. Okay. Is there any waste generated? How can I improve the system? For instance, you implemented a certain workflow or a procedure and then you found there are limitations. So how do you improve the efficiency? And finally, what are your constraints? Do you have sufficient PPEs? Do you have sufficient resources to dispose of waste? These are your constraints which you need to address. Okay, this is the procedure itself. Let us look through it one by one. So we have a procedure, a laboratory procedure 
which involves the collection of the sample followed by the culture of the sample in the lab. This may be a viral or microbial culture. Then you have the actual examination, either using microscopy or biochemical methods. And then you move on to the data itself. You generate data and this data has to be transmitted or transferred to the client via a secure storage server. As you can see, there are multiple processes going on over here and you may also generate waste as a result of this procedure. So you have to have a waste management protocol. Now, each of these processes is associated with a specific personnel and these personnel have to be trained within the entire system itself and their training has to be integrated with the organizational bio-risk management policy and the entire facility may be contained. So this red barrier represents the containment space. This may be the contained laboratory facility. Let's go into the system itself. So the first aspect is defining the system, which involves establishing the objectives and defining the processes. Structuring the system. So in structuring, we organize the system so as to achieve the objective in the most efficient manner. Move on to understanding the system, which involves interdependencies between multiple processes. And this is where your role as a bio-risk manager is critical. You need to observe situations as they occur and document these processes and then apply corrective action. And this is where you have continual improvement of the system, what we call the CQI, continuous quality improvement and the resource constraints which you must establish. And this must be discussed with your top management. Okay, what are the keys to a successful bio-risk management system? Let us look at these keys. And the first key is basically the commitment by top management. Top management must take ownership of the system, provide the adequate resources, give safety a priority over science, communicate the virus policy across the organization, integrate virus management throughout the organization. For instance, if you are a laboratory involved in research, you must integrate virus management within your research ecosystem. Identify opportunities for improvement. And finally, define the root cause and apply corrective action. Now, management is also involved in setting the goals these goals may be related to the improvement of processes themselves in terms of efficiency and in terms of safety. So the focus on continual improvement focuses on the ownership, assessment, effectiveness and efficiency, preventive actions, continuous education and training, setting goals for improvement, recognizing and rewarding employees. Now this MOOC is part of this component, which is education and training. We have designed and developed this MOOC to address the shortfall in training, which is the critical element in most labs. And if you do not have adequate training, this can lead to accidents and incidents, which pose a risk to public health and safety. We now move on to planning. So planning involves these steps, which are risk assessment, hazard identification and risk management. So we first conduct a risk assessment. We then identify hazards and we move on to risk management. We will cover this entire cycle in the second week of this MOOC. And this constitutes the basis for the AMP cycle, which is risk assessment, risk mitigation and performance assessment. Planning also involves conformity and compliance. So it involves the identification of all relevant requirements, which may be your national or your federal or state level requirements. And you must fulfill them in order to legalize your process in your lab, your work process. So your organization must comply with these requirements. 
So as a beginning, what you need to do is look at the guidelines from the WHO, the BMBL, the CWA, and you read through them, and then look at your legal requirements for your respective country or your respective state, or your, even it may be your own respective municipality. And then you must integrate all of these together before you come out with your laboratory biorisk management system. And planning also involves objectives, targets, and programs, which is establishment and management of documented biorisk control objectives. This word here is very important. Documentation is required during audits. For instance, if you have an accident or an incident in your lab, you will not be able to identify the causative agent or the causative element in this accident if you do not have the proper documentation. You need to establish controls and establish procedures for the documentation of the controls. You must document every accident and incident in your laboratory, even a near miss. From planning, we move on to implementation. And implementation involves development of your organizational structure, allocation of roles and responsibilities to every member of the organization, appointment of qualified and competent personnel to conduct the laboratory operations, implementation of training and communication of biorisk management policies and practices across the organization. As a biorisk manager, communication is key to safety. And this is one word which must be highlighted, which is communication of biorisk management policies across the organization. This will be your general structure of a laboratory. So you have top management, senior management, and as a biorisk management committee, which will report to senior management. And this virus management committee will comprise of scientific and technical experts as well as administrative personnel. The biorisk manager and the facility manager must be part of this virus management committee in order to basically translate policies and communicate between the top management or the senior management and the laboratory personnel. So a management committee also has advisors who may be called in from time to time when specific uh, pathogens or biological agents are being processed in the laboratory. The virus manager themselves, the facility manager who looks after the engineering aspect of the facility, the occupational health and safety personnel who look after the welfare of the personnel in the laboratory, the security management for biosecurity and the animal handling units which who look after the animals at the facility in case you do have animals being used for experiments. Okay, then we move on to operational management. So operational management involves operational control, general safety, Management of inventories. This is very important because of biosecurity management. You must manage or maintain inventories of all the biological agents being stored or processed at your facility. Work planning, assigning work which is within the capacity of individuals, both in terms of the intellectual capacity as well as psychomotor capacity. Work practices, best practices in the workplace. Waste management, personnel management, identifying personnel and training them, and infrastructure and operational management. These are all the aspects of operational management which must be addressed by a biorisk manager or a biosafety officer. We now move on to another aspect which is the review of the process, and this is part of your audit. So the review is at the behest of the top management and this review must be conducted periodically. Now the periodicity of the review depends on your own management. Generally it's an annual audit in which you call external and internal auditors so that you have an unbiased review of the system. Top management must evaluate suitability, adequacy and effectiveness of the management system. If not, it must be addressed and improved upon. And finally, the assessment of opportunities for improvement. 
This is a very critical term. For instance, you have your laboratory management system and everything is running normally. So you assume it is perfect, but it is not perfect. You must look at opportunities for improvement, identify certain processes which may be improved upon as part of the continuous quality improvement. Now this essentially keeps everyone in a state of alertness. And when you are constantly trying to improve the system, you will be alert. But if you let the system be by itself, status quo, generally the system tend to degrade over a period of time. So we must look at the opportunities for improvement. Okay, when you do your review, you may require certain information for, by your auditors. These in, in, include the result of audit. So the auditor will pre prepare the report. The biosafety officer or the virus manager will translate this report into a language which can be understood by the top management. It may require a presentation and there should be evidence of compliance to standard operating procedures, status of risk assessment activities, status of preventive and corrective action, follow up action, recommendations for improvement by previous audit and accident and incident investigation. Now all of this must be documented. That's why in good laboratory practices, we always do what we write and write what we do. And this also forms the basis for bio-risk management. We document everything, every communication between the biosafety officer and the top management and the personnel must be documented. Every process must be documented as this is critical to improving the system. Okay, in this lecture, I have basically provided you with an overview of the following, the management systems approach, the key elements of a successful virus management system, the development of a virus management plan, ensuring conformity and compliance, implementation of the virus management system and review of the system itself. Okay, now as a conclusion to this lecture, I want you to look at this entire laboratory management system in terms of your current organization. If you are currently employed in a laboratory facility, please look at the system itself and try and propose or attempt to propose a system for management of your laboratory resources. You can develop this as a presentation for your top management and try and uh, garner or gather their support for your initiatives. So that brings us to the end of this second lecture. If you have any questions, you may please post them in the forum. I will try and address them either as a video presentation or as an alternative lecture. Okay, these are some of the references for this particular lecture. So I have referred to the CWA extensively, which is a very good reference manual. It is open source. It's available at the website. And I will give you the links and the actual document. And CWA 16393 implements the CWA 15793, it's a guideline. These are very useful references. I have also prepared what is known as an extended version of my lectures. So these are not part of your assessment cycle. I have included them as additional readings. In these extended version of lectures, I have presented a more informal and more broader aspect of the discussions. So you may refer to these as part of your learning process and they will be available on YouTube. I will release them on YouTube so that you can basically view them whenever you have the time and you need advice on virus management. Okay, with that, I thank you for participating in this lecture. Thank you very much and stay bio safe. Thank you.